This video talks about um, the compression of the vertebral artery. And I would also like to talk about the similarities and the differences between, between the scenarios of the compression of the vertebral artery with that of thoracic outlet syndrome. Because when I did this question for the first time, I confused this one as a thoracic outlet syndrome, and I will tell you exactly why I thought that. But um, in this video, I would, um, I would be talking about how we can differentiate between the two really easily. So without further ado, let's go to the question that we have here. And the question says that a 78-year-old man comes to the physician because of progressively worsening pain in his joints and neck for the past three months. He says that the pain is worse when he rotates his head from side to side. Physical exam shows motor weakness in his arms and legs, mild ataxia, and slight ophthalmoplegia. What explains the findings in this patient? So I will talk about first why I thought this was thoracic outlet syndrome, but keep in mind this is not. So when he first, when the question we need first says that he has worsening pain in his joints, I thought this is just a distractor because his 78 year old problem, uh, chances are he must have uh, bad joints here and there. And, but I ignored the fact that it says joints and neck for the past three months. So this is very acute. So moving on, he says that the pain is worse when he rotates his head from side to side. When I read that, I thought that he must be talking about, um, he must have maybe a compression of the subclavian artery uh, due to a cervical rib, which is causing um, a stop of flow uh, when he rotates his head from side to side. Maybe that's it. And, 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 and it gets worse because he's old and he must have um, joint problem making the nerve impingement even more. Um, continuing on, physical exam shows that the motor weakness in his arms and legs. Again, this I thought was just out there as a distractor. Mild ataxia and slight ophthalmoplegia. Again, I thought these are all um, distractors, okay? He's 78 year old, chances are he could be a little ataxic and slight ophthalmoplegia is probably normal for someone that old. So there, that's where I made my big mistake. Um, I did not take into account that it could not be thoracic outlet syndrome and that's where the compression of the vertebral artery comes into play. So first of all, I would like to talk about the shape of a vertebral body. So let's draw a shape here really quickly. So let's say this is the bony part of the vertebral body, okay? All right, and then we have something similar to this. Okay, something similar to this, and we have a structure like so in the middle. This is a very uh, crude diagrammatic representation of a vertebral body. Um, so this is going to be our body. So that's definitely our body. One thing I missed here is what we're going to be talking about. So the structures here on both sides. Okay, and then we have, this is the, the foramen, the vertebral. Vertebral foramen. Okay. This are called the foramen transversus. Okay, so our spinal cord, so take a guess, where is our spinal cord flowing? Which structure, where is, where does the spinal cord fits in? It's this area. That's where the spinal cord, uh, the spinal cord runs. Uh, and it's obvious because there is only one of these, okay? Uh, and then when we come to the two sides on this one and this one, this is the area where we have our uh, vertebral artery and vein. Okay, so we have here vertebral artery plus vertebral vein. Okay, so... Imagine that with time, 
what's going to happen is this foramen is going to become narrower and narrower. Why? Why is this foramen going to become narrower and narrower? Is because in elderly patients, due to uh, osteoarthritis, there's going to be osteophyte. Okay. Now, what is osteoarthritis? Osteoarthritis is the disease of the joints where the cartilage um, becomes um, it because of too much. Uh, uh, friction between the two surfaces, the cartilage pretty much disappears. As a result, there is bone and bone contact. And when there is bone and bone contact, there is going to be um, damage to those uh, bony areas that are in contact and they're going to have structures which are oozing out of them called osteophytes. So let me give a quick diagrammatic example. So imagine that this is your bone. And this is your other bone. Okay. And then we have your cartilage. And the cartilage gets damaged, and when there is bone in bone contact, you're going to have structures sticking out like this. So, what does it do? It makes this space between the two bones even smaller. So, that's exactly what's going to happen here. Due to old age, there's going to be osteoarthritis osteophytes, which is going to um, decrease the size of the foramen. As a result, we're going to have all sorts of um, all sorts of symptoms that will happen due to that decreased um, foramen space. And since this is these are the vertebral artery, which is going all the way to our brain, uh, we are going to have all kinds of symptoms um, because this vertebral artery will not be able to supply as much blood. And the whole the whole supply of oxygen and blood is going to be decreased, and we're going to have all sorts of um, all sorts of um, um, clinical scenarios that come up because of that block of the foramen or decreased flow of the vertebral artery. So let's go back to our question and see where do we stand now. So another thing I would like to mention right here is the fact that I think in this case moving his head from side to side is a big clue. Also, the acuteness of the situation, only three months, progressively getting worse, there is pain, there is other joint problem. All these are kind of leading on to the fact that it could be vertebral uh, artery compression. But what really seals the deal is mild ataxia, slight ophthalmoplegia, and motor weakness in the arms and legs, which says that it not only supplies our, you know, extremities, it also supplies our eyes, our cerebellum. So we're going to be thinking big here, like what big artery block can cause this kind of uh, scenario, along with the fact that this person is going to have pain when he moves his head from side to side. So all when we take all those information into, um, into one single unit, what we get is compression of the vertebral artery. Okay, so that is my interpretation of compression of the vertebral artery. Hope you liked it and see you in my next video.